What's up, YouTube? I'm your host, John Hawes. Thanks for joining to another episode of Christ Geared, where I'm going to be showing you guys my truck. Now, this is the third part to a three-part video where I have already uh, explained to you guys a little bit about me, where my, my experience with cars, my interest in cars, stuff like that comes in. Also, in that same episode, it ties in with my faith. Um, the second episode, I'm making turns, so I need to hold y'all down here. Woo! The second episode is a walk around on my motorcycle. All right, come on, dude. Could have totally got around him, but whatever. Um, <clears throat> second episode is me kind of doing a walk around on the motorcycle, showing you guys, hey, this is my Harley Davidson Fat Bob. If you want to go, if you want to know, and you want to, if you haven't already seen it, go check it out. Uh, I've also got pictures on Instagram. I'm not really going to mention much about that. But this episode. Oh, well, ah, my bad. Second episode is a walk around of my Harley Davidson and kind of me explaining what I've done with it and then potentially future plans. Um, but the big, the big story is going to be this thing, all right? My 1997 Ford F-250. Um, trying to think of something else I haven't said. I will show you guys this walk around, but let's go ahead, roll that intro because I'm actually going to be doing it here in a few hours where I'm going to be serving at a place called Beautiful Feet Ministries where uh, it's been minutes since I've actually served there, so I need to go out there and do it. Um, I need to go out there and serve. Not just, K, like, do something good, but um, just to be around people, just, you know, to enjoy the stuff and uh, see what God has to teach me. So, anyways, with all of that being said, God bless y'all. Let's roll the show. And here it is. Uh, I've already got the hood up actually because I this is my second take of this walk around if you're wondering. But let me go ahead and I'll start from the beginning because I think I failed the first time. So this beast right here may not look like much. I feel like I'm on solo here um, talking about the Millennium Falcon. She don't look like much, but she's fast. Um, not the fastest thing. I'm not I'm not trying to claim that. But for a 23 year old truck, you it'll move quicker than what you expect. And I'll get to that here in a minute. But Either way, this is my 1997 Ford F-250 with a 7.3 diesel power stroke automatic transmission four-wheel drive that I've had since I was 19. Uh, I'm 25 now, so I've had it for about six years, and it looked a lot better whenever I first bought this thing. Um, unfortunately, I kind of, being, being a kid uh, and getting way too ambitious with projects, I was like, oh, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, and then I started taking stuff apart and didn't really finish it. So um, this went from a mild project to a really serious project that I did a lot of work on to kind of undo stuff and it's almost getting to the point where I'm trying to redo stuff and especially fix stuff because um, you guys will see here in a minute like when you know a few wiring projects that I did when I was a little bit younger uh, a little bit more on the redneck side but um, if I can find a couple pictures I'll kind of roll them through as I'm talking here but this F-250 um, this F-250 I've had for about six years. Uh, I, I got it pretty much bone stock. The only thing that was done to it whenever I bought it was, I think the guy I bought it from, he uh, he cut out the catalytic converter and he just put in essentially what you will, a straight pipe. All the rest of the stuff I have done to this thing. At first, as far as mods go, I went, I think I got a chip and then I got a, uh, I, I cut out, because I had, literally I had to cut that out, the Cobra, Cobra head, downpipe from this thing for this thing which was choking the original turbo and then I went with a mandrel bent three inch downpipe which eventually got yanked out whenever I put in the new spoolie boy system which is why I got one of these things in here and I'll show you that here in a minute but um, the truck itself like I said 23 years old I bought it with 275,000 miles right now it's ticking uh, around 340,000 miles Surprisingly, it has not blown up with the abuse I've put it through, and eh, there's gonna be a little bit more, but we'll see how it goes. Whenever it blows up, I'll just rebuild it, right? To finish up the mods, like I said, chip, the downpipe, and then I put in injectors because I thought I was having a injector issue. Turns out it was electronic, um, but turns out it's an injection driver module, and so then I ended up getting a new one from Swamp's Diesel. And ironically, the one they sent me was bad, but then they sent me a new one and I've, put like several thousand miles on this thing with that new injector driver module. So everything's good. I don't know exactly what was going on with that. <clears throat> but 
Um, let me go ahead, do a walk around real quick, and then I'll show you guys what's under the hood. And to do that, I'm gonna be grabbing this camera because it's a lot more portable and it does stuff a lot better. But as you guys see, this is the back of my truck. Doesn't really look like much. Um, I think as I said, if I haven't already said, I do have a bed for this thing that I am working on. I am repainting, uh, well, repainting and rewiring because it was done by a cool dude, but he was, he was a house builder. So all the wires, all the colors and all that stuff was for a house, which was kind of funny. So um, even then, like, imagine the bed being on the truck, like under this corner right here, it would look like a rat's nest. So I ripped it out. I'm going all LEDs all the way around. Uh, like I said, I want to repaint the bed just because, you know, it needs to be looking fresh or I want it to be looking fresh. And then I'm also going to be repainting this guy. Now I've, you know, a couple years ago, I started sanding this thing down. Hadn't really touched it. Um, for the most part, it's got clean body lines. Uh, I've gotten part of the pin stripping off. Um, yeah, you can see some slight rust that's starting to build up here. Need to take care of that. Um, but yeah, eventually I'll be right, hopefully getting a bed liner on this thing, tintable bed liner with a kind of dark metallic blue. We'll see how it goes. It'll be really interesting. But now that I've shown you guys kind of generally what's going on around the truck or around, around the whole, the backside of the truck, let me show you guys the front and under the hood. All right. So like I said, I do have an intercooler that was pulled from a, I think a 2001 F-250. It was wrecked. Intercooler obviously is good. So salvage yards was like, I'll take that. And I bought it from them for about a hundred bucks. Now the rest of this stuff, I'm not going to tell you the cost of it because, um, Frankly, I'm still healing from it. I was trying to save for a house and this truck ate a lot of that. Yeah. Um, so obviously for the intercooler down here, I need the piping to be able to push, you know, move the charged air into this thing to cool it, which actually, uh, I didn't realize it's actually super effective for those who have an intercooler or are able to mess with one. Um, it's really funny coming from the turbo right here this stuff i mean right now it's warm because i ran it a few i was running it a few minutes ago but um it's really funny how the turbo i didn't ever realize even though the, the okay like to follow the path the filter goes to the turbo the impeller side intake side whatever charges it goes through this guy you put your hand right here it gets hot but then you go all the way through here you put your hand on this side it's actually about room temperature or about the temperature of the ambient air so I didn't realize how much these trucks need intercoolers. Amazing thing. So to keep following, uh, it goes up here, splits off, goes down the engine, and bam, you get your you get your extra boosties. Now, the turbo, I went with a kit from iRate Diesel uh, for their SX369E, I think. Uh, it, I went from the original Garrett, which I still have, which will we'll, future episodes you guys will see it be thrown on something. I don't know what though, but. I took off the Garrett TP38, it was about 60 millimeters. Um, and then I threw on this T4 from Borg, uh, T Borg Warner T4 style turbo, which is, yeah, 69. I'm getting all these numbers mixed up. I went from a 60 millimeter turbo to a 69 millimeter turbo. Let me go ahead and clarify that. Anyways, I got that guy, which is from videos I've seen, I think it's able to push like 30 pounds of boost into this thing. So we'll see how this truck handles it. Now, in order to get this turbo to work, uh, I don't know if I can, this engine's really hot too. Uh, yeah, you can see that right there. That's the drain tube. The, <clears throat> in order to make that turbo work, I had to pull out the mechanical fuel pump, which I was already going to do anyways, uh, cause it really didn't supply that much for fuel. But I pulled out that pump. I have the drain tube from the turbo going there just because that's that's the way I rate did I rate diesel did it and in order to have that turbo work now that that drain tube is there obviously that means I can't well I don't have a fuel pump on this thing but that was fixed with another kit from I rate diesel that I bought um, as you see right here this is my regulated return make sure I'm actually there we go this guy right here is my regulated return after it's already gone through each of the heads and stuff. Now, the big boy that supplies this stuff, or big boys, I don't know. The, the fuel pump is in there, actually. It's it's tucked up in there. These are my primary and secondary fuel pumps, which I just kind of cut and spliced into here. So that way, this guy gets all the fuel she needs. That was kind of redundant. Guy, girl, whatever. The truck gets all the fuel she needs. And uh, I'm trying to think of anything else. Um, 
if I was saying something about an IDM, I got an aftermarket one right there. So all in all, with the chip turned up, which the chip actually isn't optimized for this setup, it's still for pretty much a factory setup. And I think if I'm doing my math correctly, granted, I don't know how much power is being robbed from the transmission that has been rebuilt, mind you, um, to hopefully handle this stuff with a upgraded torque converter. Um, I'm expecting this thing at least to be pushing 400 horsepower to the rear wheels when I take that chip and I go click, click, click and turn this thing up. Um, with no weight on the bed, it is really funny. <laughs> this thing will not, it, it, it won't hook up. Now, four wheel drive helps with that, thankfully. But most of the time I don't have the front hubs gauged because fuel economy and diesel is not, not cheap. Right now, I think this thing, the best I've seen for fuel economy in this thing is about 16 miles to the gallon. So uh, I think before I started doing all this stuff, I think at one point I calculated it out to be 20, but I was also doing a lot of freeway driving. So uh, include a little bit of city stuff in there. I don't, I don't know. So combined right now, it's making about 20 miles to, excuse me, 16 miles to the gallon with a little bit of coal rolling, not much, but um, which I was also really surprised too, the turbo helps with that. So turbos are good for the economy. You actually see that in Ford's Eco, EcoBoost engines, twin, twin turb skis. Um, oh, I guess I should have thought it out more, but this is, this is my truck. Hopefully you guys enjoy it. You guys will see a lot. <laughs> you guys will see a lot of stuff with this thing. New bumpers, more power, the bed being thrown on. Um, I want to set this guy down so that way you guys have like two different angles. Make this interesting. Here we go. Power, bumpers, um, the, the flatbed. I want to do an axle swap too. So if I could find a Dana 60 for the front, I'll probably just go ahead and go to a single rear wheel Dana 80 in the rear. Um, build those things up, put lockers on them. <laughs> it's going to be a list. Repaint this thing. Um, oh yeah, and then I'll put a tire rack somewhere on the flatbed. You guys will see more of that. So I want to say this being the big, big, big feature of the channel as far as my, between my motorcycle and my truck. Uh, you guys want to see how this goes. You want to see where this build goes, then please, please, cause it'll help me out. Go ahead and subscribe. Also hit that bell. So that way you guys can see whenever I upload stuff, which at this point I'm trying to do it either weekly or bi-weekly, depending on what goes on. Um, because I'm also, as I said in my last episode, I'm kind of in the middle of school, not at the moment, but jobs, stuff like this. I'm not getting paid for this stuff yet. Hopefully in a few months, Lord willing. But, um, like I said, you guys want gearhead, diesel stuff, rolling content. This is going to, this is going to be it for y'all. So, like I said, subscribe because the money will help me for this thing, as well as connect and go share the word of Christ. Ha! I don't know, I was going to do something really cheesy there, but I hope I've been talking this whole time with this thing recording. It is recording. Dope. Huh. With all that being said, I want to go ahead and wrap this thing up. If you guys got any questions, please leave in the comments below or message me. I will get to that as well as I can. Um, I am curious to see what you guys want, uh, have to say. And if you guys got ideas, keep in mind that this is a Christian channel. Um, so as long as it's biblical and I could also, biblical and feasible, let's say that. As long as it's biblical and feasible, I'll consider it and I'll try to do it. Um, I think with all that being said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this thing up. You guys have a great day. May God bless you and remember, stand, <laughs> stay strong in faith, faith. Remember, stand firm in the faith, stay strong, do everything out of love. May God bless y'all. Peace out, y'all. video of me driving away for, for a, I guess you'd say, outro for this thing. Um, but I got an issue where somebody's the door lock, or excuse me, the key is not, I don't know what's going on. My key doesn't want to turn, and yeah, we might have an issue here. Alright, got an update. Don't turn your vehicle off with the steering wheel all the way to the lock because it was resting back on the actual like key lock. Even for show guys, remember don't do it all the way, just do it an inch or two away from it. Alright, now I'm done. Peace out y'all. <laughs>